Hello. I haven't done a video for a few weeks now, but this one has just really been on my heart, and I don't want to make it lengthy, but I feel like it is really a powerful topic that we need to discuss, or needs to be thrown out there, or something. The war on humanity. It's like right now, it seems like we humans are fighting amongst ourselves all the time, and we if we could just take a step back and realize there really is a war on humanity, and it was recorded in Genesis 3, as well as the book of Job. The war is serious, and what I'm seeing is, you know, now we're, we're dividing it all out, you know, the war on men and masculinity, the war on women and femininity, and of course the war on our children, through abortion, vaccinations, public education, and the food supply. All, which is interesting that the, you know, the account in Genesis 3 was also the one food that they weren't supposed to eat. So here we are, some things, you know, nothing new under the sun. The war is on humanity. And what I'm seeing in this, just very simply, is the war on men and masculinity, of course, you know, between the environment, the food. Men are actually, you know, say all the soy additives. That that just always makes me cringe when I hear children getting a soy formula or all the soy that is in our, our foods. Because that does enhance the estrogen level. It builds an estrogen level. And men don't need that. You know, our, our creator, when he made us, of course, you know, the men and their DNA and chromosomes is XY and the women are XX. And that XY, although each, each sex has both hormones, testosterone and estrogen, of course, the balance, you know, for men, the testosterone is much higher and for women, the estrogen is. That our additives are actually coming against the balance that our Creator made. So, we need to be looking at this, and it really concerns me, like I said, about the soy formulas for babies, because they're, they're, at, they're so, everything in their body is being nourished to head a direction in growth. I mean, this is so serious, and to introduce soy into a baby's life is very scary. As well as a lot of the vaccinations have um, not only do they have everything imaginable in them that we can't even, you know, I mean, there's a big long list to identify it, but, you know, some, some of the vaccinations have um, female DNA, some of them have male DNA, and that's an issue being injected into our children regularly. So, but let me, let me just break this down, because I've prayed about this. And what we've done is this war on men and masculinity has actually resulted in the protector of the home and the family being under attack. And when the protector is either not there or constantly under attack, the family is more vulnerable. And then we turn around, and especially if, you know, there's a lot of households where there are no, you know, there's no head of household. There's no man as the head of household. So that war or that avenue of the war, which involves the women, it's distracted the nurturers. Because now they're having to work and they're having to do this and that. And so if we would look at this and say the, you know, weakening the protector and then distracting the nurturer, the children are, fair, are not fair game, but the children become the targets. Or the children are the targets, and there's no one there to nurture or protect in a lot of cases. So I will say this, kudos to the parents who are anti-vax and choosing homeschooling. You know, that takes an awful lot of dedication from both parents. You know, this, this daddy's going to be coming home every day to a tired wife and however many children that never left for the day, and he's 
going to be the sole provider. So that's a huge responsibility on the father. And then once the mother has taken on that fullness, then of uh, that role of, you know, homeschooling, then by the time she gets to dinner and gets everybody bathed into bed, it's time to start, you know, playing the school day for the next day. So this is kudos to those parents. I wished I'd had the intelligence to do that. I wish I'd had the spiritual insight to do that then, but I didn't. Now, furthermore, what we're overlooking in as we all subject ourselves and our children and our spouses to this societal breakdown, we're overlooking and we're missing what our Heavenly Father really ordained for us. I mean, the majority of men, scripturally, answered to him. They were either self-employed, called, you know, they, they used the talents that he had given them to make a life and provide for a wife and children. Women, read Proverbs 31. It's like she had it all. She had her children. She was married. Sounded like a pretty good marriage. He called her. He called her blessed. She had children. She ran a business. She had employees. She, her day began very efficiently. She was a, she bought land. She didn't have to choose between children and a career. She had it all. And we need to get back to the father's plan because that's, that's the only that's the only hope we have. The war on humanity is a real deal. And we're cheating ourselves when we succumb to the tools of the enemy or even our own flesh to argue with each other and break that down. So I just wanted to say that, that, you know, the ridiculous hats and the outrageous signs and some sort of march or protest that's not empowering anyone. Using the talents our Heavenly Father gave us and supporting, not supporting financially or anything else, I'm saying encouraging and respecting that kind of support of men to be the masculine creature that our Heavenly Father created them to be. And women, we can have it all. I, I encourage you to read Proverbs 31. And then that way we actually are protecting our children and the next generation. And if we raise them in the way they should go, they'll have the same future. They'll have a future that our Heavenly Father ordained for them. Society's not going to give it to us. But the one who authored scripture will. Shalom.